God bless everybody. Yaqba Abiyah Baraka Rada. Hallelujah. My God, my God, it's so good to be back. We have been extremely busy. I hope y'all know that. I, I think y'all know that. Um, we we have two new pages um, that have just gone up. One is called Acts, A-C-T-S, which stands for Apostle Cummings Theological Seminary, okay? So uh, you can find that page, Acts, and then another is Apostle Jeremiah Cummings. But we're going to be switching over. Um, these pages that I've had for about maybe nine years now, I think I had about seven pages, and we're trying to come down off of so many pages and concentrate on one page is basically for teaching the Word. That's all That's all we do here is teach the Word of God because uh, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And as I was contemplating all of the things that I have taught, uh, about a year now, I think almost a year now, we have been on Facebook uh, live. Not quite a year yet. And I mean, we have really um, made a lot of progress. In the, um, I mean, God has really blessed us uh, with our own, you know, 24 hours, seven days a week radio network called Shabak Radio Network. Um, that page is coming down. ShabakRadio1.com is the, is the new site uh, for the radio network, which is 24 hours, seven days a week. Uh, we have spread it throughout the world. Um, I was once told, you know, I used to talk about the people from the islands all the time, you know, and I've been to Jamaica and I preached in Jamaica uh, where 500 people came out in the, in the heat with no air conditioning. All we had was big fans and they got on top of cars and they rode on the back of cars to come and hear me speak. And I talked about the fire that a lot of the people in the islands have for the word of God in Nigeria Africa. And I was told, well, if you like them so much, why don't you go over there? Well, uh, God flipped that script. God has started sending them over here to us uh, with the 10 star general Nehemiah came all the way from London, England, was baptized in Jesus name. Ambassador Zelma Bourne comes maybe twice a month all the way from Canada. She from Barbados, you know, um, uh, Angela Selvin, you know, over in the United Kingdom is tuning in. Uh, we have so many people from the islands, but we, we do have a lot of people from right here in the United States who are with us constantly. Brenda Stacey in Canada. Um, we have uh, Deaconess and Deacon Steve Thomas and Joe Thomas down in uh, Mississippi. Mary Washington uh, over in Grenada, Mississippi. The Madisons um, are down in South Haven, Mississippi. Uh, we have a covering coming under our ministry with Prophet Daryl Johnson and Prophetess Andrea Johnson. Uh, now Faith is World Outreach in Dallas, Texas. So we're spreading and we're growing, you know, and we're making progress. And, you know, and I always tell people, it's not how many people you have, it's who you have. And, um, um, but I have been teaching on, uh, I know who I am. And I've been teaching that. I've been telling you, you know, uh, one of the greatest things to know is to know who you are, the Great Pyramids. In Giza, you know, they have man know thyself, and um, and um, you know, I mean, it's it's just, it's so important that you know who you are. Uh, I have uh, taught that you are the offspring of God, and I've taught it from the Word of God, Acts seventeen and twenty eight. It says, "For we are the offspring of God." I've taught that we are the light of the world. You know, um, I've taught so many things about Baraka, the blessing of God, the menep the beneficent power of God that flows from God to us and causes us to prosper, to be uh, greatly successful um, and to have um, protection. Uh, today, even today, and I've told the story many times, but today my wife and I was driving down Highway 50 uh, in, um, in Bradley, Illinois, and all of a sudden, you know, the tire went flat in the back, you know, and I had to get out in the middle of the street to change the tire. My wife was praying that somebody would come and help change the tire. And, and, you know, and I've had this thing happen before and an angel showed up named Dakota. Well, Dakota recognized the, the, the car that we were in and Dakota said, oh, Pastor Cummins, you know, he, he does yard work for us, um, you know, in the springtime. 
And he said, oh, Pastor Cummins, he said, uh, let me help you change your tire. And he had everything that I needed to change my tire. And right there in the middle of the street, he changed the tire. I didn't have to get dirty. I mean, he was just there. God sent an angel named Dakota, y'all. And uh, because God gives his angels charge over us to keep us in all of our ways, that's the second time that I had a flat. Uh, been a long time, and somebody came up and changed the tire, and you know, and and I was able to 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 tip them for doing so. That's the second time that I can remember. But God always will send somebody to help you, to aid you, to protect you, to watch over you, because you are that. Those are the benefits of being in the kingdom of God. We are serious about the word of God. We're serious about God's kingdom. You know, and so I've been teaching on the fact that uh, we are the offspring of God. And, and, and you, need to, you need to say that. I am the offspring of God. You know, I am the body of Christ. From 1 Corinthians 12, 27, says, now you are the body of Christ and members in particular. You know, I am the light of the world. Amen. I mean, we need to start saying what God has identified us as being, because once you know who you are, then what? Okay, to know who you are, amen and amen. I mean, I hear people talk about, I've been born again, baptized in Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost and fire, you know, but then what? You know, what are we, all, what are we supposed to be doing in this earth? Amen and amen. And the Bible tells us, what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to renew this planet. Amen. This planet. We're supposed to run the devil out of here. It's in the Bible. I'm telling you, if you ain't tore the page out, in Job 8, 10 and 18, it says that he shall be driven from light into darkness and chased out of the world. Well, who's going to chase him? Amen. The light of the world will chase him from light into darkness and chase him out of the world. And so we have a lot of religion, a lot of, a lot of religion with no activity, no power, no change, you know, just, just religion. And that's not what Christ came to establish. Christ came and he only preached one gospel and it's called the gospel of the kingdom of God so that he can gather kingdom citizens and then give them power as it is written in Luke 1019, Luke 1019, I give you power over all of the works of the enemy and nothing by any means will be able to hurt you. So we're supposed to transform this planet and transform wherever we go. Amen. Wherever we go, we're supposed to bring about a change. We see that with Daniel in, in Babylon. You know, uh, being thrown in the lion's den. And then God sent an angel to bring him out of the lion's den. God will always send you protection. God will always bring you out of the devil's uh, plan. But then he converted that whole nation to the God of Israel. It is a picture of what we are supposed to be doing on the planet. We're supposed to build the old waste places. Good God Almighty. We're supposed to renovate and change the community. Amen. We got churches on every corner and no power. Amen. The corner don't change. The community don't change. We just having church. We're just having a good time. That is not what Christ came to do. He came not only to change lives, but he came to change wherever we go. Wherever we go, we, amen, we can go into the ghetto and turn it into a paradise. Amen and amen. We can do it because we have the power, we have the wisdom, amen. We have the anointing to change things, amen. And power is the ability to change things. So if he's given us power, good God Almighty, then it's time that we start acting like we got some power and let people see a change wherever we go, whatever we do, good God Almighty. In the book of Isaiah, now that I know who I am, now what? Okay, I'm the light of the world. Okay, you are the light of the world. Amen. We're the offspring of God. Okay, you're the offspring of God. Come on. Amen. We're the body of Christ. Amen. We are the temple of the living God. I think I read that somewhere. Amen. I think I read that in the Bible. And um, let, let, let me refresh you. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Second Corinthians, let me let me go here first. Second Corinthians, chapter number six, 
and verse number 16, it says, what agreement has the temple of God with idols? Then it tells you this, for you are the temple of the living God. Amen. You are the temple of the living God. It is not the church building. I'm going to say that again. It is not the cathedral. It is not the mosque. Come on. It is not the synagogue. It's none of that. You are the temple of the living God, according to 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 16. And you need to act like you are the temple of the living God. That word temple in the Hebrew is palace. You are the palace. You are the royal palace of God. And God dwells within you. It's in the Bible. Come on. We ain't tearing the pages out no more. In 2 Corinthians chapter number 6 and verse number 16, it says, For you are, you are the temple of the living God. As God said, I will dwell in them. You are the dwelling place of God. You need to say, I am the dwelling place of God. Amen and amen. I, and then God said, I will dwell in them and I will walk in them. And they will be my people and I will be their God. Amen. And so that's what I'm saying, beloved. Why should we know all of this? Okay, so I am the temple of the living God. You are the temple of the living God. We are the offspring of God. We are the salt of the earth. Good. We are the light of the world. We are all of that. Now what? Now that we're all of this, now what? Shouldn't we have more unity among ourselves? Shouldn't we be able to build something of great consequence uh, for, the, for the children even? For the community even? Shouldn't we be able to beautify an area that is run down and wasted because we are who the Bible says we are? Now what? Amen. So God says it like this. In the book of Isaiah, the book of Isaiah, all oh, this Isaiah, what, what a prophet Isaiah is. Isaiah is a powerful prophet, good God Almighty. He foresaw through the telescope of time and saw a people who were not even born yet come into life. Amen. He saw our day. He saw the coming of the Messiah. And he see us. He saw us in the prophecy 600 years before Christ. 2,600 years ago. He saw us prophetically. He said to us in Isaiah 51 and verse number 16. He said, I have put my words in your mouth. I am the offspring of God. Uh, come on, I am the body of Christ. I am the temple of the living God. Those are God's words. Those are not our words. Amen. So he put his words in our mouth, and then he covered us in the shadow of his hand to establish. Come on, it's in the Bible. To a, See, we've been called to establish something, not just to build a church. Come on, we have been called to establish the kingdom of God in the earth and to bring people into the into the family of God. That's our calling. Amen. So this is why when Jesus, he said, the great commission, I've been hearing it ever since I've been in the church, go into all the world and teach all nations. Come on. And so he ain't telling us to go into every church and have a conference and go into every church and have a revival. He said, go into all the world, foreseeing what we're doing, foreseeing the internet, foreseeing Facebook, foreseeing a way for that to happen. People have been inviting me to India. People have been inviting me to Africa. I'll say I'll be there at 7 o'clock Central Standard Time all the way from Illinois. I'll be in Africa. I'll be in Nigeria. I'll be in Uganda. Come on. I'll be there. I don't have to get on a plane to go nowhere. I can sit right here through cyberspace and talk to the whole world as we're doing tonight in Trinidad, Jamaica, in the, in the United Kingdom, we even have radio over with Steve Harris, the Gospel Truth Radio Network and Starlight Broadcasting Network. We're connected with those networks now. Amen. And we're teaching the whole world right now. You might can't see them, but believe me, we are hearing from them on every week. Amen. People, huh, you'd be surprised at the lives that we're touching and we're expanding now. We're shutting down a lot of the websites that I've had for a number of years, and we're going to one or two websites so that we can concentrate on speaking to the nations.
from those websites. Amen and amen. Amen. So God says in Isaiah, listen to me, listen to me, in Isaiah 51 and 16, he said, I have put my words in your mouth. Amen. Amen. And when you can say the word of God, it's in your mouth. Amen. It ain't my word, it's God's word. He said, I have put my words in your mouth and I have covered you in the shadow of my hand to establish the renewed heavens and to lay the foundation of the renewed earth. We are renewal. We, we're supposed to be renewing the atmosphere, renewing um, the community, renewing people. Amen. Amen. And to say unto Zion, you are my people. Amen. 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 And God always, look, what the devil fears is you being able to remember what God said and repeat it. Amen. He don't care about you going to church as long as you can't quote nothing. Because it is by your words you are justified. According to Matthew 12, 37, by your words you are justified. And I've been telling you this. Justified is just if I was saying it. Just like it, It's just like God was saying it himself because it's his word. So when you, when you are able to say what God said, it has the same power as though God himself was saying it. I've been quoting, you know, a, a strange thing happened. You know, we went to a funeral last Saturday, you know, and it was a pretty, pretty rough neighborhood, you know, and, you know, a lot of stuff goes on down there. So what I did, I prayed. I said, Lord, send your angels before us and kept us round about with your angels. Bring us, take us there and bring us back safely. Amen. And you know, my favorite scripture is Isaiah 54, and verse 7, uh, Isaiah 54 and verse number 14. Um, um, no weapon formed against me shall prosper, and every tongue that shall rise up against me in judgment is condemned. And so I'm praying this prayer here in St. Anne, Illinois, going, getting ready to go down to this funeral in a pretty rough area. Amen. I mean, a whole lot of stuff goes on down there. And so we went to the church, sat down in the church, and I looked up and on the pulpit um, scarf were the, was the scripture Isaiah 54 and 17. Amen. Uh, and I'm saying to myself, look at God. You know, I'm telling you this word is so powerful because this word is God. This word is God. And so when you say the word, you are activating uh, spiritual power. You're, you're, you're creating things when you say the word of God. You want to create wealth? Amen. Uh, say what God says. I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health. Amen. Even as your soul prosper. Your soul prospers as you eat the word of God. Amen. As you, as you nourish yourself in the word of God. So God says, I put my words in your mouth. I covered you in the shadow of my hand to establish the renewed heavens. And to lay the foundation of the renewed earth. And to say unto Zion, you are my people. And God takes care of his people. God provides for his people. God promotes his people. He protects his people. Come on. If you are, if, if, there's nothing like being a child of God. There's nothing like knowing God got your back. Regardless of what anybody says about you or try to do to you, it won't work because God got your back. Amen. Look at Isaiah 59 and verse number 21. These are some scriptures that I wrote down before I came on the set tonight. In Isaiah 59 and verse 21, God says, As for me, this is my covenant that I'm making with them, said the Lord. He says, My spirit, my anointing, which is upon you, writing the law of God in your heart. Amen. He's writing his law, his word in your heart. Good God. So that you can say it out of your mouth. And my words which I have put in your mouth shall not depart out of your mouth. Because man shall not live by bread alone, but we live by every word. I wonder if we can get that in our spirits tonight. We live by the word of God. All of our provision, all of our promotions, all of our everything it's based on the word of God. It is our manual for life. We live by it. Come on. We believe it. We, com we confess it. Amen. As you said, man shall not live by bread alone. I don't, I don't, I don't understand what, what's so hard about, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. My faith is in what God says about me. Not what people think, what people say. It don't matter. 
People are going to talk about you whether you do right or wrong, whether you do good or bad. People are going to run their mouth because they ain't got no life. So the only thing they can do is talk about other people. Don't even let it bother you. Used to bother me. Don't bother me no more. I've grown past that. Uh, I have divorced myself from the opinion of men. And you have to divorce yourself from other people's opinion. Y'all all right? Amen. Amen. So God says that he has put his words in our mouth. And he says that the word won't depart from us, nor from our children. He's talking about true spiritual children. Look at it now. Now let me show you what, what is the purpose of knowing who you are. Look at Ezekiel. Y'all all right? Ezekiel chapter number 36 and verse number 35, amplified version. Look at the purpose now. He said, then they will say, once you have the word of God and understand who you are, changes started happening. Amen and amen. We get ready to brick a side of our church, put new brick on the side of a church. Amen. Because one day we're going to have to, one day soon we're going to renovate it and remodel it and build it again. And make it look good. We want billboards on the highway. Interstate 54. Billboards in Bourbon A. Oh, it's coming, beloved. Amen and amen. We've had them before, but this time we're going to have them and keep them. And we have a, we have a great uh, architect, um, J. Long Construction, down in um, Indianapolis. We have a great uh, man with us, man of God with us, um, Minister Tracy Keith, who's doing a lot of work and renovations for us right now. Amen and amen. We're about to see some great things happen in our midst that will affect the community and affect the world. Amen. Because hey, we know who we are and why. We are here to establish the kingdom of God in the earth and to bring in citizens of the, citizens of the kingdom of God that we may live. Uh, as I said before, earth is our throne, but heaven is our home. Amen and amen. And so... Look at Ezekiel 36, verse 35. God says, I put my word in your mouth in Isaiah 51. God says that his spirit and writing, the, writing his law in our heart in Isaiah 50, 59 and 21. Then in Ezekiel 36 and 35, look what it says. Then they will say, see, once you understand what God is doing by teaching you the word, changes have to happen. Amen. There's no way. See, let me tell you something about truth. Truth demands change. You hear what I said? Truth demands change. You cannot stay the way that you are and act the way that you are once you receive the truth, unless you reject the truth. If you reject the truth, you get worse. But if you will receive the truth of God, receive the word of God, it puts a demand on you. Truth demands change. I've changed. I am not the guy that I was even when I first came to Kankakee in 2013. I'm not even the same person. I'm surely not the guy I was back in the uh, early 70s when I sang with Harold Melvin and the Blue Notes. Come on. Amen. I'm telling you, truth demands that you change. You don't want to know why you're changing because when you hear the truth, the, Jesus said you will know the truth, you will hear the truth, and the truth will make you free. It demands change. Amen. So as we get this truth, it's putting a demand on us to change and to change things and change our environment. Everywhere that a child of God goes, he becomes the landlord of that environment, and the environment has to change. People have to stop cussing. Come on. People have to respect you because you're walking in the anointing of God. People have to come to your aid and help you. As, uh, as Dakota came to my aid today, a flat tire in the middle of a highway, he jumps out the car. He got the jack. He's got everything. He changes my tire. I didn't have to even, I didn't have to do nothing. God just sent him. My wife prayed that somebody would come. And two minutes after she prayed, here he come. Changed the tire. Got a brand new tire too, beloved. Amen and amen. I'm saying, if you walk in the truth, if you walk in the word of God, your life changes and everything around you will change. The devil will flee as the Bible says. Submit yourself therefore to God's word. 
Resist the devil and he will flee from you. That's real. And that's real. Amen. Amen. Listen to this. Y'all all right? <laughs> Listen to this. Ezekiel 36 and 35. Then they will say, this land that was deserted and desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. And the waste and desolate and ruined cities are fortified and inhabited. That's the results of knowing who you are and going into a place and demanding change by speaking the word of God. Amen and amen. Amen. Do you know how powerful the word of God is? I don't think we understand how powerful the word of God is. Let me show you how powerful the word of God. Look in Jeremiah. I got a book in here. Jeremiah chapter number five and verse number 14. Let me show you the power of the word. And I mean, it works. I mean, it'll cause every demon to, to stand to attention and flee when you come on the scene. Jeremiah 5 and 14. God says, wherefore, thus said the Lord God of hosts. He said, because you speak this word, because you speak this word. He said, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. He said, my word in your mouth is like fire. I was in the Bible review toward the page. Y'all go and look at it. And y'all need to write this down. In Jeremiah, good God Almighty. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Jeremiah chapter number uh, five. Amen. I got so many pages here. I'm just, uh, Jeremiah chapter number five and verse number 14. He said, because you speak this word. He said, I'll make my words in your mouth fire. And this people, your adversary. Those that work against you, they're going to be like wood and it will devour them. I'm telling you something. It's dangerous to mess with a citizen of the kingdom of God that can speak the word of God. Amen. It is dangerous for the devil to try to come up against a child of God, to come up against somebody who's anointed in the word of God. God wants you to be anointed in the word. It is dangerous. Amen. For the adversary to mess with you. When you know the word, the adversary can play church all they want to. They can act like they got all of this and all of that. But if they don't know the word, if they, and you know the word, they are done. And I've seen it uh, all of my life because I know what God has done in my life. I was supposed to have been an aborted child. I wasn't even supposed to have been born. I mean, I, I ain't by myself. Amen. For Jesus wasn't either. Moses was supposed to be gotten rid of. Jesus was supposed to be gotten rid of. Some of y'all out there, an abortion or tip was made on your life, but you made it because you were chosen in God before the foundation of the whole world. And so the word of God is so powerful. In other words, once you have the word of God, you're going to have adversaries that's going to try to stop you going to try to make it look like you ain't doing nothing, try to make it, try to make it look like you just making all this stuff up. Amen. Let them, let them, they do that. They did it with Jesus. If you be the son of God, they turn these stones into bread. I mean, they did it with all of those who were called of God. Don't worry about the demons. Amen. He said, let me show you the power of my word. In Jeremiah chapter, I haven't even got to my lesson yet. I'm just taxing on the runway. We ain't even took off yet. Amen and amen. But I feel the fire. He says in Jeremiah 5 and 14, he said, because you speak my word. He said, behold, I will make my words in your mouth fire. And whoever works against you, your adversary, it will devour them. You don't have to worry about nothing. As long as you, the word of God is your warfare weapon. Your word of God is your shield of faith. The word of God is your sword of the spirit. Good God Almighty. The word of God, I'm telling you, is God. Amen and amen. And when you know the word, when you know who you are, amen, then you're, you're going to be held accountable to change things. Not to go along with tradition and not to do things the way that they used to be done 50, 100 years ago. No, when Jesus came, they said, who is this man that come 
you know, teaching and have not letters. He ain't even come from our theological institute. Man, who is this fellow they talk about Jesus? Because he came teaching in a way that, that was non-traditional. Amen and amen. Amen. I just happen to be like that too. I don't teach traditional, what they call traditional church stuff. No, I teach the word of God, the word of faith. Amen and amen. Amen. So notice now, and I want to get to my message tonight. Now that I know who I am, now what? Now that I know who I am, okay, I'm the offspring of God. Okay, I'm the temple of the living God. Okay, I'm the light of the world. Okay, now what? God says, huh, then this land that was deserted and desolate will become like the garden of Eden. We are to establish heaven on this earth, not hell. The devil has established hell on this earth. Man, just listen to the news and look at all the hell that's going on on this planet. And look at all the storms and all the tsunamis and all the cyclones and look at the weather. And man, I'm telling you, God is judging this world in our midst right now. You ain't got to wait on the judgment. God is judging this world. He's judging the earth right now because of his wickedness. I went to Jerusalem and was shocked to know that there was drugs in Jerusalem, prostitution in Jerusalem. I was shocked in the Holy Land. They don't care nothing about that. I've been to cities where prostitution went on in front of churches. Hey Amen. What? That don't even make sense. That's an oxymoron. It don't even make sense because people are having religious services, but they're not serving nobody. They, oh, come on. They're not serving their community. They're not serving, oh, come on. They're just having traditional religion, and I'm tired of it. I mean, I can't, I can't take no more. I know too much word. I know too much word. I want to say to all of those who are over the children ministry at Shabbat Global Headquarters, Minister Michelle Folks and, and uh, Sister Tia Henderson, y'all are doing a wonderful job. I think we're going to call it uh, Gideon Cadets, the children ministry. You know, because we got to start teaching the children and raising the children in the word of God. Right there, Shabbat, and then invite the whole community. We're serious about this word. We're serious about changing the community. We're, we're serious about it. Amen. And we, and we got people in all over this planet now who are serious about helping us do this work. Amen. And we love you. We thank you for your contributions. We thank you for your prayers. We thank you. Amen. From near and far, we thank you. And we give God the glory. Amen. Now remember, it's all about the word of God. And Jeremiah 5 and 14 said, because you speak the word, you can't speak what you don't know. Amen. He said, because you speak the word, he said, I will make my words in your mouth fire and your adversary will be like wood. Amen. They can say what they want to say about you, but when you speak, they burn up. Amen. They get uncomfortable. Amen. And that's to protect you and what and what God has called you to do, to renew the planet. He says it. <laughs> he says it in Isaiah 51 and 16. I have put my words in your mouth. Well, my, your words in my mouth is like fire. I have covered you in the shadow of my hand to establish. We were here to establish. Amen. The renewed heavens and lay the foundation of the renewed earth. We got to renew some stuff. We've been called to bring about renewal. And that's why I say now that I know who I am, now what? And now what? Let's, let's pool our resources. Let's put our nickels and dimes and dollars and money together and build something. We're in the process of renovation, even at, even at our headquarters now. Amen. We're going to put a new look on that, on that place. And eventually we're going to remodel that place and expand that place. Amen. Amen. We're going to do it. And we don't plan. My wife and I do not plan to be pastoring and leading people for the next five or six years. 
Amen. We're going to build, build ministers. Amen. Amen. That can help carry it on when we go on. Amen. Amen. I'm 60. I'm going on 68 years old. I don't plan to be, and I hope God don't, don't plan it either. I don't plan to be preaching until I'm 75 or 70 even. Amen. I want to teach. We always teach. We may be doing it by cyberspace, but we will always teach the word of God. Amen. But we need a younger ministry, young people. Amen. That we can pour into that can carry the work on. I see too many black churches don't leave nobody to carry on the work and then the church go. I've seen great churches, I mean, with thousands of members, and they didn't leave nobody, didn't train nobody, and all of a sudden the building's gone. It's a parking lot for some business now. That's ridiculous. Amen. The Bible says that the wise man leaves an inheritance for his children's children. All the people that we minister to are our children. Amen. They are our spiritual children. Amen and amen. So now what? We are the only ones whom God, the creator, says, you're the light of the world. You're the salt of the earth. You're the temple of the living God. And we were put here to establish. Amen, amen, and amen. We were put here to build. Amen. We were put here to teach. Been teaching you, Baraka. The first thing that God would do with Adam was Baraka. Bless him empowered him. Amen. He empowered him. His spirit flowed through him. Amen. Amen. So that he could be prosperous, so that he could be uh, uh, protected. Amen. So that he could have great success. But he disobeyed God and he lost it all. And Christ came to give it back to us. Amen. To give us back the Baraka blessing. Amen. He came back that his, that his spirit and his power will flow through us that we may not just talk about we got it, but, the, but we demonstrate we got it. We show the world we got it. Good God of mine. We teach the world how to get it. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. We are recovering the original assignment. We are recovering now the original assignment. Adam was supposed to spread the Garden of Eden, replenish and multiply the Garden of Eden throughout the whole earth. But because of his disobedience, he failed. Because of his disobedience, he failed. Christ came that we might prevail, that we may receive those blessings. In the beginning, God gave man five assignments. He gave him five, messiah, five assignments. But before he gave, them a, a, gave him the assignment, he blessed him. It's there. Genesis 1, 28. And the Lord God blessed them. Amen. Then he said, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion. And all the assignments were lost when Adam fell away from God's presence through disobedience. Amen. The second Adam. Somebody say the second Adam. The second Adam, Christ our Messiah, came that we might recover the aborted assignment today and now and anoint us with what Adam lost 6,019 years ago. Daniel 7 and 18 prophesied. In Daniel 7 and 18, he said, but the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom back and possess the kingdom forever and forever. Amen. And we'll start reestablishing. Re uh, amen. We'll start reestablishing everything that Adam lost. It's in the Bible. You ain't told the page out. Daniel chapter number 7 and verse number 18. He said, but even though Adam did all of that, even though Adam lost everything, even though Adam aborted his assignment, but look at the but here. In Daniel 7 and 18, it said, But the saints of the Most High, I claim to be a saint of the Most High. And all of you out there who claim to be a saint of the Most High, raise your hand and say, Hallelujah, I am a saint of the Most High. He said, But the saints of the Most High shall take the kingdom, take it back from the devil, and possess the kingdom forever and forever. Our assignment, now that we know who we are, 
Our assignment is to deliver to God's prepared, chosen people the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Keys are words that open doors. Good God Almighty. Amen. And his word in your mouth opened doors. Amen. You got to say it before you see it. You got to say it like God would say it. Amen. You got to believe what you say and say what you believe and doors will open for you. Good God Almighty. You want to be a millionaire? Say, God, show me how to be a millionaire because I believe I'm a millionaire already. I believe I'm millionaire bound. Amen. You got to say it. You got to believe it by faith and it will come to pass. Ask Tyler Perry. Ask Steve Harvey, people y'all know, who slept in their cars, didn't have a dime, and people laughed at him. Well, I thought you was going to make it. I thought you was going to be this great wonder. They laughed at him, but they held on to what they believed. If you ask anything in my name, I'll do it. They held on. The little scripture that, that, um, that Steve Harvey said that he remembered was Mark eleven twenty four. If you have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, he said, you can speak to the mountain and command it be removed and it shall be removed. And he said that nothing will be impossible for you. And that's all Steve could hang on to. But he held on to that word. Now he got so much money, he don't even know how much money he got. And I'm saying, but we want the money not to say what we have accomplished. We want the money to so that we can build and establish something new that people will come and be taught the word of God. That's why I, I went on and established a, book, uh, a page called Acts, Apostle Cummings Theological Seminary. Today, so you put in Acts, Apostle Cummings Theological Seminary, and you'll see we're starting a page there. We're going to be teaching there. The School of the Prophets, we're teaching there. Amen and amen. We're teaching there. Good God Almighty and amen and amen. And so I don't know. Now that I know who I am, now what? I can say it. I know who I am. I know who I am. I am an heir of God. I am a joint heir with Christ. I inherit God's spirit. Amen. We're the only creation that can inherit God's spirit. God's mind, good mind, amen, God's power, amen. Now that we can inherit all of that, now what? Now what? Now it's time for us to go to work. Now it's time for us to put our money where our mouth is and let's go to work, amen. I've never been a part of anything or ever sought out to do anything and I didn't have naysayers and people saying he don't know what he's talking about. From the time that I said I was going to make it in show business, I had people telling me, man, you ain't going to do nothing. You ain't going to be nothing, man. You know who you know. You know, I've always had, you're going to have that. You're going to have people that just, they just don't believe. They don't have any self-esteem. They don't have no vision. Amen. And the Bible said where there is no vision, the people perish. You got a vision. Hey Amen. Don't let nobody talk you out of your vision. You don't need money. And you don't need a lot of people. All you need is faith. Hey Amen. All you need is a word of God. All you need is to believe. Good God am I. What God says about you. The Bible never said, and I've said it many times. The Bible never said where there is no money. The people perish. Never said that. God's word said where there is no vision, no foresight, no word from God, the people perish. And as long as you got a vision, God will give you the provision if you trust him and stand on his word. Amen and amen. We have a vision. I just got an imprint from our, construct, from our contractor. We have a vision. This is a picture of the renovation that we're going to do. And people, look, look, we don't need folks to tell us that we can't do something. Hey Amen. I told y'all one time before, this is a renovation of our facility by J-Long contractors. They'll be here 
And one day you'll see what the building is going to look like. Amen. But you can help us. All of your donations, all of your donations will go towards the building. Building fund. Building. Amen. Gideon's Cadets. Children's Ministry. Amen. Amen. We already started having Gideon's Cadets. We're going to get more children. Amen. And when we build, we're going to get more people. But we're preparing for that. So you go to ShabbatRadio1.com. ShabbatRadio1.com. ShabbatRadio, the number one, dot com. And you give towards us building, towards us establishing. We're looking at siding now, brick siding now for the side of our building. We've had, we had bird nests to make birds all in the side of the building. We're going to cover all, all that up with bricks. Amen. Minister Tracy is at work on that right now. You know, and so we're going to build. And because people said, I mean, people have been saying what I could not do ever since I was a child. You know, you can't do that. You know, then I learned a scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. And I, I live it every single day. Amen. And God wants you to live it, that you can accomplish anything. So to know who you are, to be able to quote scripture, amen, to be able to stand up and teach the word of God. Yeah, it's, that's great. But now what? Now you've been baptized in Jesus' name? Now what? Now you spoke in tongues? Now what? Now what? Huh? Establishing. That's what it says. That's what it says in the word of God. Then, Ezekiel 36, 25. Then, they will say, the people that are standing around, saying it ain't going to happen. People that are standing around, they told Gideon, they told Gideon, Gideon, you had 32,000 people. Now you ain't got but 300, man. You ain't going to conquer no nation. They told Daniel, Daniel, you're in the lion's den. Who is your God now? Amen. God sent an angel and Daniel come up out of the lion's den. And all the people that laughed at Daniel and picked at Daniel and plotted against Daniel ended up in the lion's den. And Daniel turned the whole nation around. Amen and amen. That's the kind of God we serve. And we're the people that's supposed to be turning the world upside down and telling the devil, telling the devil to get out of here. Get on out. Amen and amen. Amen. Then this land, this community, this city that was deserted and desolate has become like the Garden of Eden. Amen. How did it become like the Garden of Eden? God gave us his word. We started saying, I know who I am. We began to understand who we were, and then we got our assignment. The five assignments that Adam lost, we are reestablishing those assignments today. Amen and amen. I want to thank my wife, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummins. She is something else. She had my coffee ready by the time I got ready to come on. Amen. She got the lighting and the cameras all set up. I mean, I look, man, I tell you what, I love the very ground she walks on, Dr. Gloria Maria Cummins. Amen. You talking about a help me to help me meet my obligation to God? That woman is my help me. I want to thank all of you, all of down in Mississippi and all of you over up in Toronto, Canada, and amen, amen. Prophet Daryl Johnson and, and Prophetess Andrea Johnson down in Dallas, Texas, I want to say thank you so much for all that you do. And now all of you at Shabbat Global Ministries in Kankakee, Illinois, Shabbat Global Heck Ministries down in Mississippi, good God Almighty. I want to thank all the angels that are on assignment. I want to thank Dakota who stopped in the middle of the street and changed my tire today. And we were able to go a block and buy a brand new tire, good God Almighty. I'm telling you, God is so good, y'all. He's so good, I can say, Yahweh, Abu Yabarak, Rada all day long. He is so good. So you stay in touch. We're going to be switching over to new, to new pages next week, but you stay with us. ShabbatRadioNetwork.com. Go there. I'll see you on another page. Amen. And we thank God for uh, Prophetess Andrea Johnson tuning in and Sister uh, Brenda Stacer. Amen. Adrian Taylor. Amen. God bless each and every one of you. Even if I didn't call your name out, you know who you are. We appreciate you, Karen Buford.
We appreciate everyone that is tuned in and we appreciate everyone that supports us. Uh, Joe Thomas and uh, Deacon Steve Thomas down yeah. in uh, Jackson, Mississippi. Yeah, Amen. So we appreciate each and every one of you. God we bless do. you all. Yeah. And to our apostle Michael A. Freeman, Dr. Diddy Freeman, Spirit of Faith, Christian Outreach down in Brandywine, uh, Maryland, Baltimore, Maryland, and Temple Hills, Maryland. My daughter, Jalisha Cummings, thank you so much for tuning in. We love mm -hmm. all of you. And now what? Now that I know who I am, now what? Now it's time to build. It's time to build. The blueprint has been done. The building is going to be constructed, and we don't need a whole bunch of folks. It ain't about numbers. It's about who you have. And I believe we got the cream of the crop. Amen. I believe we got the stones of the field. We're going to build. And then we're going to build people continuously. Our children. Gideon's cadets. That's right. Amen. Gideon. Our children's ministry. Gideon's cadet. Michelle Folks. Minister Michelle Folks. And Tia Henderson. Y'all are doing a great job. We love you. Come on, y'all. Let's establish the kingdom of God on the earth as it is in heaven. God bless you. We'll see you on another page next week. God bless you.